There's nothing magic about free energy. And by free energy I mean something which reduces output energy without the need for using a fuel which you have to buy. The following is a very simple system which anyone with access to a piece of ground can get serious levels of electrical power continuously. The 3 kilowatt earth battery is something that does not need to be charged. Earth batteries are well known. They're pairs of electrodes buried in the ground. Electricity can be drawn from them, but they're generally of little interest as the power levels are not great. However, in his patent of 1893, Michael M., a Frenchman living in America, determined how to get various very serious levels of power from an earth battery of his design. In this particular unit which he describes in his US patent 495582, he gets 56 amps at just under 54 volts, which is 3 kilowatts or 4 horsepower. At that early date there was generally not much need for electricity, but Michael states that by selecting the number and connection methods of the individual components, any desired voltage and or current can be had. This of course is a simple system which involves no electronics. Please bear in mind that some forms of construction use strong acids and careless handling of strong acid can result in skin and other damage. Protective clothing should be used when handling acids and an alkali should be ready for immediate use if careless handling causes splashes. Summarizing his patent, Michael says, My invention relates to chemical generators of electricity, where a prepared body of earth is the support and excitation medium for the electrodes or elements. Any number of elements can be assembled in the same piece of ground and connected in a chain or series of chains in order to produce the desired voltage or amperage. I find that several straight chains of elements can function separately provided the gap between the chains is much greater than the gap between the elements which form the chain. Being quite separate, those chains can be connected in series to increase the voltage or in parallel to increase the available current. It's necessary to prepare the soil and the ground in the immediate area around the electrodes which form each element in the train. Figure 1 shown here shows five elements connected in a chain. This view is from above, with the rectangle goes indicating holes in the ground where each hole contains seven separate pairs of electrodes. Figures 2 and 3 show how individual electrodes are inserted into the prepared soil, C, which is surrounded by untreated ground, B. Electrode D is made of iron and E is made of carbon. Figure 4 shows how wedge-shaped electrodes can be used as an alternative construction. The advantage is that it is easier to pull a tapering electrode out of the ground. Figure 5 shows the internal current flow circuits which operate when a chain of elements is used. The arrows indicate the direction of current flow and you will notice that there, is a, there are a lot of arrows. You've got the one marked one here, one marked two there, the one marked three there, four is flowing in the opposite direction, as is six, and you have 
uh, seven, eight, nine uh, flow paths, which accounts for why there is such a very considerable level of voltage and current in this sort of system. Figure 6 shows a convenient method for periodically moistening the prepared soil areas. Soil of any type can be adapted for use with an electrical generator of this kind by saturating the soil immediately surrounding each pair of electrodes with a suitable solution which is rich in oxygen, chlorine, bromine, iodine or fluorine or with a solution of a salt of an alkali. For the electrodes I prefer to use soft iron for the positive electrode and hard pressed coke carbon for the negative electrode. The positive electrode is preferably U-shaped bar of iron which has a circular cross section. The two limbs of the U straddle the rod of carbon. Cast iron can be used but it gives a lower voltage presumably due to the carbon and other impurities in it. Magnesium gives excellent results producing 2.25 volts per electrode pair where carbon is the negative electrode. You see here in figure 2 how he's looking at the side view of the uh, enclosure in the ground and this diagram here in figure 1 is got some indication of the materials shown in it and the spacing between two adjacent sets of electrodes in the ground. In implementing my invention, he says, I leveled a piece of ground of sufficient area to contain the generating chain or chains. For instance, for 300 positive elements, each 20 inches, that's 500 millimeters, 20 inches long and 2 inches, 50 millimeters, in diameter. And it's bent like this. So you've got the metal bar bent in a U-shape and it straddles the carbon electrode E. The length of the piece of ground should be about 107 feet, which is 32 meters, and 3 feet, 1 meter wide. I dig 43 holes at a distance of 29 inches, that's 735 millimeters, apart from each other, center to center, in a line. Each hole is 10 inches, 250 millimeters wide, and 30 inches, 750 millimeters long, and deep enough to contain the seven pairs of electrodes. The loose soil dug from the holes is mixed with the chosen salt or acid in order to make the generator active. For instance, if the ground is a vegetable mould, then commercial concentrated nitric acid should be added in sufficient quantity to saturate the soil, and manganese peroxide or pyrolusite is a new one to me, should be mixed with the mass. If the soil has a sandy character, then hydrochloric acid or sodium carbonate, which is washing soda, or potash can be used. If the soil is a clay, then hydrochloric or sulfuric acid and sodium chloride may be used. The salt has been dissolved in water and poured into the hole before the acid is mingled with the soil. The bottom of the hole is moistened with water and the prepared soil mixed with water to the consistency of a thick paste is then put in the hole surrounding the electrodes. The 43 groups of electrodes when wired in series as shown in figure 1 will yield, will yield 53.85 volts and 56 amps developing a total of 315 watts. By increasing the number of cells, the capacity of the generator may be correspondingly increased 
to any desired output. The prepared body of soil should be periodically moistened, preferably with the acid with which it was treated when first prepared for action. In a general arrangement, uh, a generator intended for continuous use, I prefer to provide a reservoir shown as A in figure 6 and run a pipe made of a material which is not attacked by the acid. Run the pipe along the chain of elements with a nozzle over each element so that they all can be moistened very easily. Any accumulation of oxides or other products of the reaction between the prepared soil and the electrodes may be removed by raising the positive electrode and then forcing it back into place again. The carbon electrode can be cleansed by simply turning it without lifting it from its place. I find that the period of use for the generator during which no addition of salt or acid is needed increases with the period of use. For example, during the first day of use, the acid or salt should be added after 10 hours of use, after which it will yield 26 hours of service, and then after another moistening it will operate for 48 hours, and so on, progressively increasing in duration between being moistened and the gener uh, generator op op sorry, this generator operates very consistently and reliably. Nowadays we find mains voltage alternating current to be the most convenient to use. For a system like this we would be inclined to use an ordinary inverter which runs on 12 volts or 24 volts or possibly even 48 volts. However, it needs to be remembered that the working input current is high and so the wire used to carry that current needs to be thick. At 48 volts, each kilowatt is a current of at least 21 amps. So using a 48 volt inverter with the above 54 amp system would provide a continuous 2.68 kilowatts which is a seriously effective power supply for household use and at extremely low running cost.